Hello, beautiful Earth Angels. Welcome to Team Joanna. This is going to be a weekly transmission, and uh, we are following it with a theme of pick a card. Although uh, today, this week, they gave me birds. So we'll go through their birds because the type of bird that is being given has a significance as well. So we're, 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 we're having fun with this. But before um, I go there, I want to thank you for being here. If you are new to this channel, uh, if you are new to this type of information, uh, welcome. I hope you stay. I hope you find this information useful. Ultimately, my goal with presenting you this information is for you to have the ability to free yourself. What to free yourself from? None other than your own limitations. So if I can help you in some way, lift off the fog that you are in, uh, then I am honored to do that. And it's my passion to do that. So thank you and I hope you stay. Um, for those of you who are returning, thank you once again. I will never ever forget to thank you because you're the reason why I do this. You're the reason, believe it or not, I um, push myself to do what I do. And sometimes it feels like I'm getting too close to the edge of the cliff and it can feel mm, a little bit scary. And uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because I am hungry for knowledge. And when I have uh, where I have somewhere to present this knowledge, which is you, you, it's like you drive me to drive towards this knowledge. All I'm trying to say is that without you, being here and listening to this, there would be no use for me to channel this information. It's that simple. So I thank you for that. It is, uh, uh, for me, that is abundant. So I am feeling abundant because of you. Um, is there anything I want? Okay, so they're showing me the sign of limitations. So we will be talking about limitations today. Uh, and before we go through the different birds, I want to uh, kind of give you an idea of what I have been experiencing over the last few days. And again, for those of you who are new, every time I mention myself or, or every time I'm being asked to reference myself, it's because either you currently are going through this, have been going through this, or will shortly go through whatever it is that I am experiencing. So my aim with sharing this with you is perhaps to give you the comfort if, of knowing that although you might be feeling crazy, you are perfectly okay. And hence me having this conversation. I have been feeling the last few days where I had moments of questioning my sanity. And I've noticed that it happens every time there is a huge, what I call an upgrade. So when I connect, when I say the word upgrade, it's my own Joanna's ability to perceive things on a much grander scale, which affects everything in my life, including what I here do for you. So I have been having a few moments like this and essentially whenever I ask what is happening, even though logically I think I know, it literally is shown to me that pieces of my mind are being broken off. It's like my mind is separating. The mind, the mind that I am referring to is the mind that holds all the beliefs, conscious and subconscious beliefs. So I have been noticing subconscious beliefs come up where it, it's very hard to describe, but the way, the only way I can explain it is uh, I keep having stuff coming up I never knew existed in terms of my connections to attachment fears because everything is layers and I know that, I talk about it all the time. But every time it comes up, it's not that it surprises me, but it can be, it's an eye opener and it can get intense because you are bringing up an old energy, old frequency. And as I am explaining this to you, I am beginning to realize what it is. So I am, they're showing me this for you. Meanwhile, it helps me to understand what's happening. I love how this works. Uh, I always learn by talking to you. Excuse me one moment. I'm My mouth got dry. So if you're feeling wonky, it's the energy. 
it is an extremely potent energy where you may have moments where you will not know where you stand physically emotionally spiritually as a matter of fact it happened to me or for me where i had a moment where i felt split in half and i did not know what to believe i did i didn't even know what to believe about the things that i'm doing right now it's all of a sudden like everything became separate from me and i saw my beliefs and then i saw the me looking at the beliefs and I didn't know I was confused. And what I'm getting is, it's like we're getting separated to be put back together again, but in a way that it's going to be much more constructive and much more functional down the road. So literally, if you think of it as a, an analogy of a garden, the weeds are being pulled out, okay? So what is a weed? Weed is neither good nor bad, but we consider weeds some things we don't want in our uh, garden, for example. So they are not um, aligned with the purpose of us having a garden. So we take them out. You understand the analogy. What taking weed also means symbolically is taking weed out with its root, which means not only are we getting the top part or the symptom, we are looking at or getting letting go of things with its root, which means the beginning of when something happened. What this means is you might start having um, either memories or symbolic scenarios in your mind pop up that will take you back momentarily to somewhere in the past and it's almost like this jolt of energy takes you there. You experience it for microsecond and then you come back. But when you come back, it's like something is different. Uh, the way I'm explaining to you this right now, it's literally how it's shown to me. And I'm just literally repeating what I see. So I have no idea if that's the case. I trust that it is. Uh, but again, I have, been tr I have been questioning myself. So... If you are questioning yourself, if you feel like you're going crazy, if you feel like you've lost your mind, if you feel like your mind is splitting in half, if you feel, uh, if you all of a sudden feel like you're being controlled, or, oh my God, I'm, uh, if, if any of this stuff comes up, they're saying it's history in the making. It's like another analogy. You know how blankets, when you sit on it for a while, it has to be kind of shaken and all the dust has to come out. That's kind of sort of what's happening. So it can feel very uncomfortable because it, we are going through an energy upgrade. So the only thing that I wanna say here before we continue on with the birds, try to, as much as you can to not resist it. Even though you may have a feeling of, oh my God, am I going crazy? Chances are, if you're asking, if you're having a logical conversation with yourself about you possibly being crazy, then chances are you're not losing your mind. But they did tell me we are losing the old mind, which means the, the concepts which once created our foundation. Foundation in terms of what we believe. And we are, or our life is a, uh, almost like fabrication of what we believe. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a um, what's the word please? Um, manifested form of what we believe. Is there anything else I want to say? Please drink a lot of water. As you can tell, I'm, my mouth is getting dry, but please drink a lot of water because this, uh, apparently it helps with the energy conversion, conversion, because this high frequency is being assimilated in our bodies. And that takes a, a, a toll on the body as well. So if you are feeling extra tired, if you are feeling like you need to eat a lot, if you are going jittery or quote unquote crazy and you may it may even manifest in you as an onset of an anxieties because uh, you're being supercharged and when you're being supercharged everything gets supercharged so if you're already anxious it may get supercharged uh, so initially you may feel it as that that's why it's really really important to do groundwork or grounding hugely important it, ground what grounding does it, it's almost like imagine this 
it's a huge wind and it's blowing everything and you have something really, really strong to hold on to. So even though the wind is blowing really, really hard, you're still holding on. You're not moving anywhere. It takes an effort to hold on, but you're not moving anywhere. That's the analogy they want me to leave, okay? What, when you are going through these moments where you are questioning your sanity, it might help for you to remember to ask this question, what do I really believe in terms of who am I? So if you believe, for example, like I do, that you are a being which, whose essence is light, then that being the top, so to speak, everything is underneath that, which means at the end of the day, you are a being which is light. What it does, it reminds you what to remember. All the things that you are freaking out about, going crazy, am I losing my mind? Those are all ego-based things. So in those moments, it's, it, it's like remembering who you are solidifies your own sureness of yourself and that grounds you in your in your truth, in your bigger truth. And then you realize that your ego is freaking out and is asking all these questions because all these things are coming up to the surface. So in moments like this, remember to ask yourself at the end of the day, who am I? Okay. So if you don't know who you are, then that might be tough in terms of asking that question. So perhaps for you, Again, we need to go back to asking yourself, who are you? Who are you? Because if you don't know who you are, you're always going to try to seek whatever that is that tells you who you are. But whatever that thing or person is that tells you who you are, that's not it. That's not it. So if you don't know who you are, then you have to pick or choose who you would rather be, who you would choose to be. or acceptance. If you don't know who you are, can you accept who you are today, the way you are? Then you pretty quickly know what it is that you would rather have instead. Okay, is there anything else? I'm seeing a faucet and water is being turned off. Okay, this is a really odd message. It's, um, I feel like somebody's water is being turned off. Okay, I don't know who this is for. This is very odd. Please don't forget to pay your gas and um, electricity bill. I don't know who this is for. This is seriously very funny. If you're neglecting your bills or if you forgot or it's like, they're literally showing me somebody's water cut off and somebody's heat cut off. And I don't generally get these type of messages, but it's makes it this transmission a little bit more flavorful, if you will. So please don't forget to pay your bill because you might get cut off and you don't want to do that right now, especially if you're somewhere where it's cold. Oh, excuse me. All right. Is there anything I want to do? No, I want to move on to our first bird. So if you have picked Robin as your first bird, and by the way, when I looked at the first meaning of Robin, Robin, Robin as a spirit animal, what I got more than anything was letting go of past behavior. So Robin, if you've picked Robin, it is uh, bringing a message around letting go of past behavior. So let's see what cards we have that help us do that. The first card is called exploration. So the first card was a theme. So your theme over the next little while is to learn to explore your mind without judgments. Now, that's a reasonable thing to do, right? Except when it actually comes down to doing it. We seem to have a lot of difficulty looking at ourselves. We either look at it with really rose, rose glasses or we look at it with, uh, with shades, which means so we're so we're not so affected by it. Either way, changing 
our minds and how it works willingly will never happen without us exploring how the mind works. So if you, if you think of the term freedom, which by the way, when you think of the sign of a bird, to me, the bird, the first thing it represents is freedom. Freedom of choice, freedom, freedom, taking flight freedom, okay? And unless, so we're looking at freedom as, as an idea. I have yet met a person who says, I don't want to feel free. That generally doesn't happen. But generally, most people are free. They're not tied to a desk. They don't have somebody sitting uh, by them, holding them hostage for most people. Of course, there are things like that. I'm not talking about those things for most people, okay? so. If we seek freedom, but we don't seem to be experiencing it, and nobody's holding us to our non-freedom, then what's holding us back? It's our limitations. And unless we need to learn to be okay with exploring our mind for the purpose of education, not for the purpose of vilifying yourself for, yourself for something or vilifying somebody else for something, but for the purpose of understanding. Because without understanding, very little change can happen. Okay? And for change to be effective, it has to sink in. It has to have roots. So there's a root analogy again. Exploration of the mind is as significant to growth as roots are to a plant. Thank you for that. That is a beautiful analogy. Absolutely stunning analogy. Therefore, if your roots are not healthy, whatever is above the root is not going to be as healthy either. It's not going to be as abundant. Roots meaning your foundation. Exploring the mind for the perfect purpose of understanding and realizing your limitations, realizing what your limitations are. You already are realizing your limitations. What you are not realizing is your potential because your limitations stand in the way. So in terms of your behavior, how do you limit yourself? What do you do every day in order to diminish who you are? When you start looking at your actions and behaviors and how you contribute to your unabundance or lack of love or lack of respect or whatever it is, but once you realize how you contribute to it, it gives you the ability or gives you the choice to not do that or to do that less. Okay. Which automatically allows you to shift your vibration. And that is like clearing the old ways. That's clearing. In essence, that's clearing. So for the next little while, notice, how do you keep yourself in your own prison? When I say prison, I mean the mind. The mind is something I don't think us humans will ever fully understand. I am fascinated by it, as you could probably guess. It's in essence my passion. It's to study the mind, to understand how the mind works, how the mind affects everything we do. And uh, the mind is a powerful thing. And by exploring your mind, you begin to realize your own power. The power is in your mind. It's not in your head, it's in your mind. The head, the logical head, human head, interprets it a certain way. But your human mind has limitations. So exploration is really big. What's this? I have not seen it. What does it say? Protectiveness. Okay. Um, it did come up this way. I don't feel I want to look at it reverse. I want to see first what this is. So I'm going to hold this for you 
in case some of you want to tune into this heart or this card when i tune into this card this is what i get why is it always so hard like somebody says to me why is it always so hard i feel very tired i feel deflated i feel like things are happening to me okay so what i get from this is how do you hold yourself back in order to protect yourself and we do that a lot as a matter of fact i think one of the best one of the biggest reasons why we have limitations is to keep ourselves safe right for example if how, what example can i give let's use a money example i think that's going to draw this home nicely if you have unresolved fears around money because you grew up in an environment where, where money was, was scarce or the idea of, was, of money was not a healthy one. It was bad, money is evil, all that kind of stuff. Um, you will not have a tendency to go out in the world and put yourself in a situation where you could attract a lot of money. And that's because your belief about money says that it's bad so your belief is trying to hold you back to protect you from being a bad person for example that's how the mind works once you start seeing how the mind works it's actually very easy to follow it's it's brilliant the mind needs to figure out or it figures out what it needs to do in order to stay safe in its own little bubble okay but what happens is that bubble becomes too small because we outgrow bubbles, okay? So what are you hiding within yourself at this point of your life, this point of your journey that you would rather not deal with anymore? Or what are you carrying inside of you in terms of a burden that you would rather not carry with you anymore? Okay? And what would you be willing to do for it? What would you be willing to sacrifice for it. Ah, that's interesting. What would you be willing to sacrifice for letting go of the burden that you never want to deal with ever again? Hmm. And they're saying you have to look at it as an exchange because if you don't, you will look at it as you are giving something up and the ego does not like giving things up. So that's a message for you, Robins. There's one more card. Insight. What did I say? This is freaking brilliant. Your ability to see yourself differently varies between what you see and what you experience. Hmm. It's almost like... You learn how to see yourself by what you experience. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. By what you, oh, okay. However, what you might be experiencing moving forward, especially over the next little while with these very potent energies, you might be experiencing things outside of your norm. And this outside of the norm perception is going to shift your perception of you. It's like, okay, integrating beliefs. We, um, a lot of us know the, uh, have the idea, know, believe that there is something out there. Um, but very few people have the awareness that one would have when one died and came back. So they experienced near death, right? So, their experience was embodied, so to speak. Many of our experiences are what we believe and embody. All I'm saying, I'm not trying to say that we don't embody it. What I'm saying here is what is happening right now is how we see things, especially with how 
what we believe is becoming more integrated into the body. It's almost like what you think of as a belief is no longer belief anymore. It's integrated into your body. So it's then you being that. It's not just a belief. It's you being that. And that's the shift to the fifth dimension, they're saying. Okay? So if you think you're going through growth, yes, we are all going through massive growth. I'm liking this because this is also telling me what's happening because I, when I tune in for myself, it's a little bit different. I'm too attached. Okay. All right. Next, excuse me. We have the hawk. So with the hawk, the first thing I noticed when I was researching it, uh, the biggest thing that popped out about hawks is freedom of limitations. So very similar message. Let's see what it says. I see Hawk as a, some, uh, uh, as, uh, as a being that sees very keen, keenly from a very, very high perspective. So there is a perspective change. So the freedom of limitations to me, it's about seeing things. It's about being able to see. So let's see what the card says. So this is the theme. What does it say? Anger. Okay, now that's interesting. Um, since we're talking about hawks and freedom of limitations, for some of you, this is about you holding on to anger. Okay. If you have any challenges with liver, chances are you have some unresolved anger within you because there's a liver and um, um, organs and emotions are connected. So liver is connecting me to anger. Okay. It, that, that, that it's not it's not a bad thing. There's not good or bad in the higher perception. What it is is we hold on to anger. Sometimes we don't even know because we haven't, we don't really, we try to tune that out and it just becomes a normal part of every day and we, it's our norm, we don't think about it. But have you ever met people who have this always kind of undercutting edge to them and they're always cynical they're always they always have these little jabs that's anger energy coming through them being cynical is anger okay if you have anything like that if you feel you might have something like that that you're holding on to and i'll explain what to do with that you might feel it right about now as i am talking about it it might be triggered in you so where I feel it is at the top of my chest, predominantly my right side, and it's coming up to my throat. It has this half of me, okay? Sometimes it's difficult to talk about the fact that you're angry at somebody and you should have gotten over it. Well, if it was that easy, you would not be holding on to anger. So I don't know who, who this is for. Maybe if this is for some of you in order to help you understand another person, okay? I don't judge feelings as good or bad. Anger is simply a certain vibration that is a feeling and it's part of our experience. Generally speaking, this level of vibration has a tendency to drag things down, which means to drag our frequency. So we tend to not want to hold on to it too long. But when we end up holding on to it for long, it means that we then live off of it. It gives us energy. Holding on to anger eventually gives us energy and it becomes our source. It becomes our source of energy. So not only is it a limitation, it becomes our source. Do you see the, do you see the contradiction there? Do you see the, you know, it's, it, it fuels you, but it's also a limitation. It's like you have to give something up. So if you're trying to achieve something perhaps, and it's not happening, perhaps you are one of those cynical people or have this idea that nothing ever happens for you because you're still angry because of something that happened to you a long time ago. And admitting it to yourself is number one step to your freedom and freedom is a choice because we're talking about the mind. You and your mind choose, okay? If you choose to hold on to free, so being realizing that's the case is very the case. It's very important without judgment. Then, if you believe that you are holding on to anger, and um, 
if that's the case, and likely you will, you're a human being, that's what we do, that's what we're here to grow from. I want you to celebrate it, not to look at it as a bad thing. Identifying it is the thing that will take you off to the next level, identifying it. So when you hide from it, it's not going to help you. It's going to, well, lessen your experience. If you are wanting to be in a love relationship, but you're still holding a lot of anger towards your dad for not giving you attention, it's going to be very hard for you to experience that relationship that you want. If you keep holding on to that anger, it could be about money. Perhaps you have anger around money. I did. It was shown to me a few years ago and I was, my mind was blown, but I'm like a little sucker saying, give me more, give me more. And you know, and not only was, was I was, I was, um, I was resentful of money and it's like, wow, where did that come from? But it came from the messages that I heard growing up. Money is dirty. You have to be stealing to, to have money. If you've got money, oh, there's something wrong with you. So naturally you go, well, I don't want to be that person. Nobody does. Right? But I identified it. Oh, they helped me identify it. Thank God. Or thank them. One and the same. So if you're holding out to anger, just acknowledge that. It's okay. It's absolutely okay. It is better to know that you're holding on to it than pretending it's not there and it having power over you, which is eventually what happens and it ends up controlling you. And I know nobody wants that. I know nobody wants that. Okay. Remember, Hawk is about freedom of limitations. Holding on to anger limits you. Feeling angry will not limit you unless you do something stupid, okay? It's not the feeling, it's the holding on to it. Because if you hold on to it, it gives you a reason for something, okay? Maybe it gives you a reason to continue to stay angry and proving your point. The world will always give you what you believe, believe it or not. Even the things you don't want to believe. If you deep inside believe in it, Subconsciously, that's what the universe will give you. It has no other choice. Okay. What's the next message? Whoa. Healing crisis and purging. I'm telling you guys, the energy we're going through right now is very purgative. Purgative, purgative. It's like um, hell on wheels, except the word hell, it's just a, I don't mean like actual hell and wheels. You get it. It's strong. Let's put it that way. So you may experience some, how do I say this? Just let me just tune into this. What I feel with this card is that if you resonate with this, it's like there's a part of you that's having difficulty accepting something as real. Oh, okay. That makes perfect sense. Remember I was talking about the energies and you might thinking what the heck is happening. Uh, this feels very much to me like there's something you are either unwilling to accept or you're having difficulty with accepting because it's so not what you thought the the other alternative is for those of you who are in this frequency you might start getting glimpses of the true nature of who you are and how the un in terms of universe and it may it, it may happen to you in such a way because it's it's a wave of energy it's frequency upgrade essentially it may hit you really hard and it may leave you slightly confused it's that's what's called awakening okay you literally begin to like you are you are you're waking up to the fact that you're asleep i don't know how to explain it any other way i only know because i've experienced this several times Okay. And uh, 
it's a it's a very it can be very confusing okay because you're waking up to the actuality of what is and not your beliefs which is different which is something that that you've created so you're you're, you're it's like your step your ego is separating from your higher self let's call that and you're and you're seeing you're seeing yourself as the 3D person, but you're also feeling that you are more than that. And it's a, it's, it's a, all I can say, it's a massive perception shift. So some of you may have difficulty with figuring it out. It takes a little while to, in, while it to integrate. And that is actually what, for some of you, this may be the time where you go, am I going crazy? Because that's kind of when it happens to me. What happens with me is I, I have beliefs and I believe, I believe, and then at a certain point, that beliefs, it's like it comes into my body and I, I become that belief. It's, a, it's, a, um, it's no longer a concept I attach to, it, it becomes me. So it, there, another way of saying it, it's like you're, tra you're stepping more into your power, into your true power it's not this power not ego it's the, the truth of who you are and it can be very scary because the frequency is so high it uh freaks out our nervous system okay so grounding is hugely important i think i talked about that in, in some of the videos very very important spending a lot of time on grounding hydrating and here's the vision that i'm being shown i love their visions today thank you we're getting outfitted with wings. Now, I don't know what wings mean to you in terms of a human, so I'm not gonna give you your interpretation. What it means to me, um, and you, you are being urged to interpret it your way, but for me personally, it's we're, I'm being outfitted with uh, my ability to fly. So uh, without those wings, I can't take off and they're being attached to me. It's got nothing to do with being an angel. It's just my representation of what it does uh, in my understanding. Um, and um, the wings to me are knowledge. So I am receiving knowledge that will allow me to take off whatever that means and do whatever it is I need to do with it. Without that, it's like, without the knowledge, it's like a bird without its wings. It cannot fly, okay? But we need to be very grounded. And I'm asking, what is the knowledge? It's to understand the bigger picture. It's like, it's to understand you outside of yourself. It's like, okay, that's what it means to be interdimensional. You are becoming aware of being a multidimensional being. I can't believe I'm saying this stuff. That's crazy. Because this is this is this is not a Joanna thing. It is now apparently. Oh God. If you've ever watched me like a few couple of years ago, even, and this, this is raw. This is raw. So if you feel you mm, something is going on, trust me, I have those moments too. But I have enough wits about me right now to, to know the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is, it's something I always go to. I have to go to those moments and remind myself, everything is energy. That's, that's science. It's not spirituality. It's not a belief. It's science. Everything vibrates, like attracts like. So what we think is what, what we, what, how we vibrate. So ultimately at the end of the day, what I believe is what I attract. It's what I will experience. So if I believe that I'm going crazy, I'm, it's not, yeah, that's not gonna help me. It's just our stuff, is, our ego is freaking out a little bit because the ego does not know what's happening because it is outside of its base reality. Thank you. Cultivation. Whew. 57. I'm being asked to talk about light codes. What about light codes? Okay, so I... <laughs> I'm not going to edit this. This is so funny. Um... <laughs> the 
they're asking me to say, this is so crazy, that I, right now that I am apparently projecting light codes and it's coming from my forehead and from my, from my third eye and from my, uh, from my heart chakra. I can't believe I'm saying this. And it is in geometric forms. And some of you have the ability to see it. I asked Joanna, <laughs> I've heard this before, but even for me, this is out there. Okay, I'm too logical for that. Nonetheless, it's happening and I am being asked to say it and apparently I just did, so there, there. And perhaps some of you see these type of things and you think you're going crazy. Well, you have good company. You're not just you and I, all right? What is this cultivation all about? Grounding, first thing I see is grounding. Uh, take, a take a load off your shoulders. For some of you, this is about uh, relaxing your body and relaxing your mind to get into something that brings you joy and pleasure, something that is relaxing. Okay, freedom of limitations. I keep remembering that the hawk is bringing you a message to free yourself from your limitations. Okay, perhaps one of the ways to deal or channel your anger is through uh, playing a guitar, playing music, channeling it somehow outside of you perhaps being in nature, perhaps write, journal, get it out of you somehow, because it needs to go somewhere. Energy cannot just stop to exist. That's not how it works. Energy is always a movement, it always flows, and your intentions, are the, uh, conscious or otherwise, direct it, okay? So you have to be mindful of that. You're your own creator, always remember that. The more you are aware of how you create, the more you will create responsibly and also more according to your likes and not dislikes probably, but more your likes. Some of you can ease your pain through meditation. I feel they're referring to physical pain and I'm actually being taken to somebody's abdomen. Now, um, <laughs> It's, it's a little bit funny because when you're in pain, it's very hard to meditate because pain does not allow you to focus. And it's like, that's the best opportunity to learn how to focus. And the, the harder we focus, which is not correct, but the more intently we focus on something, the more we create based on that, the more we see it as a reality. So if you are focusing too much attention on lack, lack is what you will experience. Because like I say, you cannot be going east while you want to experience west. It ain't gonna happen. You gotta decide, okay? And just uh, for, mo for most of you for this message, you just need to relax. It's like, I need you need to, Feel your body, like, I'll, I want to say, take a chill pill. This is so not how I normally talk. For those of you who've been with me for a while, I don't know if you've noticed, but my team has a wicked sense of humor, and that's what I love about them the most. They're just fucking out of this world funny. Sarcastic, funny, dry, totally up my alley. I just freaking love it. So, apparently... What we put out is we attract. So if that's those are the type of guides I attract, then I guess that is who I am. So if you're a happy person, you're going to attract happy beings, happy people. If you are an unhappy person or angry person all the time, then you're going to attract to yourself energy of like, like vibrations, bodied or disembodied alike. Interesting. This brings up a topic. <laughs> If you are if you are oh if you know someone who's always angry or in a bad mood they uh don't radiate a lot of light they don't and they become an easy target for people with ill intentions for beings with ill intentions because holding on to past weakens past uh low vibrating energy weakens your vibration and the weaker your vibration is, well, you get the picture. You have to rely on somebody. Somebody stronger can take advantage of you. You, you get what I'm saying? 
holding on to anger is going to do nothing but help you be less than in your experience. That's all I'm going to say. I don't know who this is for. The other message for some of you is don't be so hard on yourself. Maybe, maybe the anger is you're holding towards yourself. Maybe you're angry at you. Maybe it's time you forgive yourself for something that you are or aren't or were or were not enough. Maybe the anger is actually self-driven. Maybe this is you, I just realized. Maybe it's you. Maybe you are angry at yourself still for something that happened a long time ago. If that's the case, you're holding yourself hostage. You need to forgive yourself. You need to look at yourself through the eyes of love, like the universe would and does. Some of you need to hear this. Okay. Some of you may have some hidden anger towards God itself, whatever God means to you. There are plenty of reasons for that as a human. And if you're, if you're angry at God for whatever reason, whatever you believe God is, you will, you will experience less of what, how do I say this? I'm going to say it differently. If you have anger at God, you will not allow God to be near you. God is everything. Abundance is God. If you're angry at God, you're angry at abundance. You... Is this coming across? Some of you will get this. Okay. And for some of you, it's something you grew up with. Very normal. So none of this is good or bad. That's not, it's never about good or bad, at least not with me. Not from my and ours perspective. Okay. So. Let's go to Vulture. Now, Vulture is very interesting, and Vulture actually took me a little bit more time to research because I, my idea of Vulture is a certain one, but I specifically did not want to impose my impression of a Vulture. So I looked, and surprisingly enough, what came, what it, what came up with Vulture over and over again is resourcefulness. And I thought, well, yeah, that makes perfect sense. So for those of you who chose a vulture, vulture represents resource, resourcefulness. So let's see how this word is woven into the message that wants to come through. For me personally as Joanna, vulture, whenever I see vulture energy, it's basically cleanup of the aftermath of something that happened. So it's like the final pieces are being uh, picked off and transformed and I hear with that clearing karma so for those of you who resonate with that part of the vulture message is you are in the process of clearing karma we all are but for some of you for, for you for some reason it's being emphasized so let's see what the first card says what does it say it says manipulation. Interesting. Very interesting. And I'm just looking here. What I get with this card is interesting enough control. Challenges I want control. Feeling out of control needing to be more in control, resisting control, um, refusing control, afraid of being in, uh, being in control. That's, yeah, well, yeah, I could see that happen on, in some occasions. Uh, there's something about control. Not having control is the biggest one, I feel. But again, I feel like that could apply to anybody. But for some reason, this is highlighted for you. So let's see what we are working with here. Actually, let me just look at the energy here. Uh, for some of you, a very definite message here is you are trying to hide and it's like you're trying to blend in. You're trying to be something you're not. And there's something about you that looks different 
and because of that it's almost like it's a dead giveaway but i i don't know what it is there's there's this is a message for somebody um okay for some of you you are hiding your talents you are trying to pretend to be something you are not in order to feel accepted so this is for those of you who've experienced uh, neglect, emotional neglect, neglect growing up. Uh, for others of you, I just heard your horse, honey, you're not a rabbit. So this is what I see for some of you, you are a horse, not a rabbit. When I look at it purely from the physical standpoint view, a uh, horse is the one you can't miss. Rabbit, well, it depends. So the sheer size is um, the, the, the issue here. Horses are, I feel, a lot more intelligent. I feel that not you trying to be something you're not is you being the horse trying to be the rabbit. Well, good luck with that one. How is that going to work? How is that going to work? It probably isn't, is it? It's all about self-expression in this life. If you really think about it, you're here to express yourself. Your soul is here and it has an agenda. We call it a blueprint uh, or a desire or intent to experience something. But it's it's not just wishy-washy. There's, there's, there's a logic to it. It's not just woof, whatever. It's calculated. And um, you've come here to experience your identity in terms of a physical being. Okay. With that physicality also comes the other aspect of you, one which is not physical. We call it spirit, call it uh, God source, higher self, whatever the name you want to call it. It's energy. It's energy. It's another. It's a layer of you that's a, that's a, in a different vibration. You are seeing an aspect of uh, solidified aspect of you, but that's not that's not who you are. You're pretending to be that right now. Okay, but in any case, you come in. And um, you come in with who you are and all your gifts and your purpose is to experience that. And what you're doing is you're hiding. So if your experience is to experience the you being different, but you are trying to be like somebody else, then you're not being on purpose. You're not being, you're not here what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be you, not anybody else. That's their job to be like them. You need to be like you. So who are you? If you are trying to be like somebody, then that means who you are right now is not really well, your choice. It seems to be you, you seem to be with, stuck with something you don't like about yourself. Now, since nothing happens for no reason, which means everything, our experience has value. What is it about yourself? that you are trying to hide, that you think is of no value, yet we know that's not the case. So the thing you're trying to hide about you is some sort of value. Why are you trying to hide that? Okay, so that's a message for some of you. Um, I also see a seahorse. So for some of you, look at the uh, meaning of a seahorse and how as a spirit animal, that's another, uh, that's another um, uh, message that's coming through. Um, this is a, a weird message coming from this vision, but f for some of you, the message is you're a warrior. You're a warrior and you're trying, uh, it's like you're trying not to be seen as one or you're trying to blend in. Again, mostly to belong. So there is a fear of rejection or fear of abandonment, a very old wound, a very big one. So that's your theme. It's about you and the acceptance of you. Let's see what the other cards say. Ah, love this. Self-observance. Notice this being is holding a mirror. He or she is looking at he or herself. Here, his, him or herself. What is the purpose? As I mentioned earlier, it's to observe. 
Initially, it's to observe. Once the observation becomes more natural, because we have a tendency to observe with criticism or judgment. The purpose of observance is to learn consciously how you create. It's to see yourself. What happens is when you allow yourself to see yourself, it's like your world almost becomes bigger. It's like, literally, it's a, your world becomes bigger. It's an expansion. It's an energetic expansion. That just that shift of perception of you looking at yourself expands your expands you. It's that's that's how I'm, that's how I want to say it. Okay. Now remember, we talked about limitations in one of the other birds, but it's equally important to say it here. If you are trying to hide or trying to not be yourself, or trying to blend in, or trying to pretend that you're this instead of that. Understanding the reasons why you do that becomes extremely important. Why? Because it helps you understand you on a much deeper level. Okay, remember, the deeper you know yourself, the more the more you are, it's almost like the deeper you know yourself, the more you're allowed to drive a car, which means to drive a car is to be in control. The more and deeper you know yourself, the more you can be in the driver's seat of your life. It's that simple. Okay. Now, I don't know about you. When I first started learning a car, it wasn't just like I sat down and I knew exactly what to do. It took a while. It was uncomfortable. I had my weird habits and I learned weird habits and I had to unlearn them very quickly. Habits that would not uh, deem me a, a, um, a safe driver. So, but I had to be willing to look at all those things. So when you're learning how to drive a car, you need to self-evaluate, you need to look at different things, you need to think of different things when you're driving, right? In much the same, so you observe your environment as when you're driving. So much the same way, it's about you learning how to observe yourself. And it being as part of you needing to do that in order to experience a greater sense of, let's say, happiness or some other reality. They're saying your ability to con conceive of something lies in your in your idea in your ability to create because you're a creator. So all you have to do is just imagine something. What makes it a reality is your beliefs about it. Okay. So the ex show me an example. Uh, I'm trying to come up with an example here. I can't seem to come up with an example. It just went blank. Is there anything else I want to say here? Um, notice for some of you, if you did not grow up with somebody who seemed to be power hungry, there's, there's, there's a mention here of someone being power hungry. What is power hungry? It's the hunger for power. So what, you know, if you, if you have a power, if you have hunger to be powerful, if you have hunger for it, <clears throat> that, that, that hunger is an ego driven thing. Not that ego is a bad thing, but we want to understand what drives you, what drives your choices, what drives your, um desires again the more you understand how you function on an unconscious level the more that becomes conscious the more you can consciously create your reality okay by the way very fast apparently what's the next card Ooh, ultimately 
what matters ultimately at the end of the day? What does every human want? If you were to ask me, working with people for the last 20 years or so, love, peace, safety, contentment. Uh, if someone says money, well, then we go back to what does money represent to you? So security, all these things, it's all these, this, this is ultimately what we're after. If we say we're after this, this or that, it's because this, this or that represents a certain state, a certain way of being, a certain feeling. That's what we're after. Okay. The idea here of fulfillment. What does fulfillment mean? It may mean something different to you than it does to me. What does it mean to me, for example? It's interesting because when I tune into that feeling, it's several things all at once, which I was not expecting. But um, it has many feelings all at once, weirdly enough. But at the center of it, there is this stability. It's like, I don't know how to describe it, but it's, got, it's, a, it's a feeling of steadiness. It's a feeling of steadiness. It's, that, that, that is what it means to me. So what, is, what does fulfillment mean to you ultimately? Okay. And what limits you from attaining it? And if there's one thing that I know very well is that generally what ends up limiting you is you which is the way you see yourself. So if we start from the beginning, it's the way you were brought up, the way you had your experiences, which allowed you to see things a certain way and your perception was such that it began to believe certain things and you have begin to have what's called a belief system, right? But belief is something we learn. It, yes, we do know inherently, but a lot of it is what we learn. As a matter of fact, much of it in the 3D world is what we learn. Unless we are very connected from a very young age. And even then we learn bad habits. That's just the way it is. It's just a human thing. No, nothing wrong with that. But ultimately the idea, of, uh, the idea of fulfillment comes from within. Right? It's a feeling. It's a, it's a level of awareness. It's a... It's a, it's a, it's a vibe, it's a vibration level. It's that, like I said, for me, I forget what I called it, but for me, it was just this steadiness, just this, just this sureness. Um, yeah, that's what it means. That's what it means for me, apparently. So what is it for you? What are the last bits and pieces you're holding on to? <clears throat> that keep you from feeling safe, feeling loved, feeling happy, feeling on purpose, feeling uh, resourceful, passionate. What are those last, last little pieces, so that means you've been working on yourself, that are keeping you from attaining that? What's in your way? Identify it, okay? I asked what the general energy was and what I got was the galactic healer in reverse, which is very interesting because um, the way the energy is feeling for me certainly is there is definitely something happening in the ethers, some pretty hyped up energy, um, but it's almost like there's a, uh, dare I say there is almost like a collective resistance to it a little bit. Um, I guess that would make sense. Let me just see what else this says. Remember I was saying at the very beginning that you may experience states out of the ordinary or out of the ordinary states, okay? Um, they're saying often that's what needs to happen, the realization, that's what needs to happen in order to Take the lid off of your head. So to me, taking the lid off of your head is to opening your mind. 
it's a resistance point. So we are certainly surrounded by some funky energy, or let's I call let's call them fifth dimensional energy, and they may not feel particularly good at times. And it's the resistance. So some some subconscious resistance might come up for you. Okay, like the one I keep talking about. Am I going crazy? Am I losing my mind? Okay, ultimately, we are being looked after, we're being helped. But there is just certain things we just have to go through ourselves. There's just no way around it. Right? We have to vibrationally shift, which means our bodies, our mind, everything has to shift. So it has to undergo a process whereby when we shift, we, sh we see a completely different perspective. And that's what's happening right now. It's not a, it's not necessarily a, a, a ride in a fun park. That's for sure. All right. That's all we have for you. I hope you like this. I love the energy, by the way. Um, even though it's very strong, it was just very, hmm, I liked it. it. They lightened it for me a bit. Um, if you want to be part of the fr fr Facebook page, my gosh. There's a link down below. You can find me on Instagram as well. And um, I would love to hear your comments or read your comments. So take care and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.